Very good. Good evening and welcome to the West Shore Photography Club, regular Monday evening. This is August uh, the 8th in 2022. And thank you, uh, Mike, for having that right on the screen. I could read the date on there. Okay. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> and um, tonight we have an image review. Mike Donovan's going to be doing that for us. And we have 18 entries, so it's going to be really, really nice to see that. Our next meeting is going to be on August the 22nd. It's going to be a presentation by Dennis Baker, and he's going to show us how to do his macro soap bubbles, which all the crazy colors in it, which are really, really cool. So he's going to be doing that on the 22nd. But before we, I'm going to um, mute everybody here. And, um, and Mike, you'll need to unmute yourself. Okay, good. Um, we had a field trip on Saturday to Fort Hunter and Norbert and Mary Fox. You guys want to give us an update on that? Uh, yeah, I'll uh, talk about it a little bit. Actually, we were uh, pretty fortunate uh, to have a pretty nice morning. Actually, uh, some of our trips have been rained out in the, in the, in the past, but uh, I guess Mother Nature was helping us out here a little bit. Actually, I thought it was a pretty nice morning. You know, we had... Uh, wasn't a lot of sun at all, but uh, it was it was good for color and gave good contrast. And and uh, we had, to, I believe, 10. Is that right, Mary? 10 people? 10 or 11, uh, Norbert. 10 or 11, 10, 11, Mary. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, that's all I have. Mary, you got anything else to say? No, it was, it was nice. It was nice not to have sun for a change. Sometimes it's nice to have the um, the overcast days just to get different a different look. And that's what we got. Yeah. How long did you stay there? I was there about an hour and a half. Okay. I, I was about the same thing, about an hour and a half. Yeah. That's okay. all right. Okay, great. Actually, there was a, there was a wedding being uh, getting ready to, uh, in, in, in the mansion. And uh, there, were some in, there were some interesting things in that, uh, that area. That, that's really a neat area there. You got the, both sides of the road there. You, go, you got the, the, the covered bridge and you got a couple areas with flowers and, and you got the river, of course, and, and the, and the Rockville Bridge, so it's it's a good photo opportunity there. And if you and if anybody wasn't able to make it, um, it's open all the time. You can just go any time of the day or into the evening and trade right on the Susquehanna. It's really a cool place to go uh, for photography. Okay, uh, this coming evening we have a uh, a program at Messiah College, and this one is this is one that is an instructional kind of a field trip. We have for that, Elaine Shook is gonna be there as a mentor, uh, Mike Donovan, Mark Abano, and myself. And we're gonna be walking a loop around uh, Messiah College, and we'll be stopping and doing things like discussing depth of field and how we should be doing that. Uh, we're gonna do some blue hour work at the Palmer Music Hall. Um, we have a really, really tiny little uh, waterfall we're going to work on. But one thing we're going to spend a lot of time on is composition. And, uh, you know, we talk about leading lines and the role of thirds and stuff like that. And we're going to spend some time doing that. And uh, when we did our, our um, a walkthrough on Wednesday, last Wednesday evening, Mike Donovan um, was there and was telling, uh, was having us look to see beyond the image and in front of your nose. And that was a very, really cool exercise that we did. So we're gonna be doing that. That'll be at six o'clock to eight o'clock next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday evening, and you'll have an email on that. And that's a, that'll be really a lot of fun. So we have some future trips come up. We're working on a flower workshop. We're talking about the Hershey Zoo maybe for animals. These are all in process. Uh, the Capitol Fountains at night, we're going to be doing that again. We're going to be doing another um, night trip in uh, Harrisburg, and maybe we'll do one on uh, street photography in Harrisburg also. So we have some really cool future trips coming up by the Trips Committee, and we're so happy to have them doing that for us. So we muted everybody, and so we're ready to go. We have uh, tonight, we have Mike Donovan doing an image review for us. So I am going to leave it muted, and Mike, um, the stage is yours. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you just fine, Mike. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do full screen mode. Is that all right? That sounds good. 
Okay, we all right? We are perfect. Okay. The first image is pairs number one. Um, and what I generally do is we have a, a sheet as far as guiding our judging or suggestions or whatever. So I try to follow that so that I'm consistent all the way through with every image. So um, if you're wondering, oh, why would he say that? Or why did that come up? Um, I have an actual framework here that, that we use so that, like I said, it's consistent for everyone. So the first thing that, that the sheet says is, what did you do well? Um, the first thing that strikes me is that pretty much the lighting is even and soft and beautiful. Um, the, the image itself, if you look carefully, is not like super crystal clear sharp. And my guess is either that was on purpose to make it look more like an oil painting, or maybe there's a really slight blur or slight texture, but it gives it a more painterly look, which plays right into the hand of a still life. Uh, exposure wise, no hot spots. The background is black, but so what? The pears look really beautiful against that. And there's bruises on the pears that pick up that black background. So that's that's nice. Um, what suggestions do I have for post-processing? One thing that I would think about is um, darkening this tray a little bit. Joe, can you see my cursor? Yes, we can, Mike. Okay, if you'll notice, you, this half is much brighter than this half. Now with the pears, you really don't notice it very much, but here you do. And it's a little bit strange that this handle throws a shadow down here when the light's actually coming from this side. So one suggestion I might have for you is lighten this shadow up a little bit so that it blends more into your, um, into your cover here. And I also would think about darkening this area right here so that the light attention is on the pairs. One of the problems is with doing that is the value of this color. By value, I mean, we'll just say the brightness. It, there's more to it than that, but let's say the brightness. The brighter things tend to advance. So you can see that this is definitely closer to your eye than the pairs, and that's fine. But you see it drops off here and it's brighter here. So it's it'll be a simple thing for you to burn here a little bit or however you choose to darken and lighten that just a little bit so that the attention is on the pairs rather than on the, um, on the tray. It's a beautiful shot. I mean, the soft focus is completely appropriate for this image for sure. And one other thing about focus is I'm gonna try not to say, you know, this looks a little soft or this looks very sharp. I will mention it a couple of times, but looking at something on a screen is very different for each screen. So whoever took this is probably thinking, well, it looks sharp on mine. So um, it, it won't hurt that it's a little soft. It plays into the image beautifully. But if I'm wrong about that, then, then please tell me a little later. Composition-wise, the, the triangles always work out beautifully. Always. And the crisscross is a tremendous idea. It creates some negative space here. And there's negative space all the way through here. And even in here. So it's really, really beautiful. Just a really light shadow here delineates the back pair, oops, the back pair from the front pair. So that adds some depth. You, you've heard me talk about layers before, and that works even in a small area, a light layer, a dark layer, and a light layer that creates depth. Uh, let's see, the brightness of the tray I talked about. Um, there was a little, and I know this will sound stupid, but there's a little run of white here that maybe you want to deal with. It's it's almost unnoticeable, except for somebody like me that's picking it apart. 
<laughs> but what happens is the value is so much brighter than the value of the pair that those dots, now that I brought them to your attention, tend to want to move forward. So I would get rid of those. And I think about darkening that a little bit too, when, when you're darkening the rest of the, um, the tray, if you decide to try that. Uh, the lighting is smooth on the tray. It's just slightly unbalanced. The color is excellent. The warmth of the pears is calming, relaxing. Their positioning is good. And um, I don't know if, if whoever took this knows this, but the symbolism of pears in a still life could mean fragility or gracefulness, nobility, um, happiness. So your choice of pairs for your symbolism was a good one. And when you look at a still life, the old Dutch masters or whatever, those things all mean something. They were chosen for a reason. So good choice on the pairs. My final suggestion is to darken that right side a little bit. See what you think of that. Maybe lighten the shadow underneath. It's a, it's a beautiful shot. Your lighting is good, except for that little bit of unbalance. That's an easy fix. Who's the photographer? Oh, by the way, before I go on anymore, as far as um, a suggestion for who to look at, I'd like you to look at an image called Still Life with Pears by Sophie Ko. I'm just suggesting one image this time. Still Life with Pears, Sophie Ko, S-O-P-H-I-E. C-O-E. Now, who's the photographer? Hey, Mike, uh, Dave Marchetto. I Thanks. knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to sleep now because you found those dots on the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you try so hard. But, you know, uh, Mike, um, I wasn't sure if this should be about the tray or the pears, so... <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I was kind of torn. I really uh, appreciate those uh, thoughts. As far as sharpness goes, I'm so glad you commented on it. I spend so much time getting things, and this is uh, tack sharp. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, you know, I'm having sort of a, a conflict about it, Mike, because then I don't like it. And then I go and sort of soften it, which, you know, I was satisfied with. But it's, it's uh, something I'm really wrestling with. You know, I, I, I like sharpness, but many of the images that I've submitted, uh, the, you know, the reviewer comments that they're, uh, they're soft. So it's, a, it's kind of a sort of a yin and a yang for me. Well, in this case, if it, it's a little soft, it doesn't hurt it for me. It makes right, it really right. Literally. I really appreciate those thoughts, Mike. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, one other thing, Dave, is when you have an image like this, make a decision as to what it's about yeah <laughs> and i don't mean to be a smart aleck but that'll really help you in your processing that yeah you decide what it's about I, I i really appreciate that I, and i won't forget it thanks so much okay okay image two the old bench uh, my first note says that black and white was a really good choice for this because this is about texture not color um, you revealed the textures, and they're almost kind of gross. You certainly wouldn't want to sit there. <laughs> the composition is excellent. The diagonal line and composition denotes activity. Um, it's also a leading line. It will carry you right all the way into the image. Um, I hate to pick on the lighter spots, but there's a couple that I would remove. This really has no, no purpose. I know it's really actually there, but what happens is it'll fight with what you want people to look at, and that is your texture. A uh, little one here, and like I said, I know they're there. The problem is when you print it, it won't go away. So think about doing that. Um, again, like I said about the sharpening, I, I'm looking at it at a screen, so I really, I really shouldn't comment about that. Um, technical issues, it's well exposed. A good black and white image, I've said before, has light areas, dark areas, black, very, very 
small black areas, at least for me anyway. I don't like a big black block somewhere. Um, really nice, really nice underneath here. There's a little bit of information. So your, your composition I think is good. I like the fact that your bench is a little bit off center and leads right through the image. Uh, also composition wise, I like the repeated diagonals and all of a sudden they're intersected by slight diagonals. So it, it um, gives you a feeling of flatness and verticality, I guess you would say. So real nice there. Uh, let's see, the lighting is smooth, it's beautiful. There are no shadows, although sometimes shadows help with texture. In this case, the texture is pronounced enough that I, I don't think it hurts anything. I really like, again, the shadows underneath. It's a good capture. It's something that uh, I guess I can say normal people, non-photographers, would walk right past and think, I'm not sitting in that thing. But you noticed it. You saw the textures. You saw the lines. You saw the shapes. And that's what black and white is about. The textures, the lines, the values, and the shapes. So you did good. One other suggestion I might have is why don't you try a little bit of a burn over here? So where it's leading is a little bit more mysterious. Just try it and see what you think. Other than that, I like the image. And I'm gonna to suggest to you a photographer named Andre Cortez. He's super famous. He wandered through the streets of Paris mainly at night, photographed benches and stairways and railings and and really set a precedent for a lot of photographers. Andre Cortez, K-E-R-T-E-S-Z. K-E-R-T-E-S-Z. Okay, who's the photographer? Uh, that's mine, Mike. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. This is this was at Lily Ponds. Oh my gosh! Yeah, why didn't was... you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> there was a little pond in the back behind all the um, the big ponds uh, when you first come in. And uh -huh. I happened to see this bench there while I was taking pictures of a statue in the pond. I was like, I don't think I'd want to sit on that, but that looks interesting. <laughs> Yeah, nice, very nice. And I will try your idea, the upper right, because I like the picture, but I've been trying to, it. it it's not quite dramatic enough for me, so maybe darkening mm -hmm. that edge will help. Yeah, try that. Okay, thanks. Or even, even maybe a burn along the right side in the bottom, maybe, too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great blue in flight. Um, you can probably see that it was taken in dappled sunlight, which makes the exposure very, very difficult. So considering the bird is moving, the sunlight is dappled, you got good exposure on the feathers for sure. The background is nice and soft, which also um, plays into the depth. Now, this is a perfect example of a lighter value coming forward and a darker value dropping away. This is a perfect example of that. The lighter values, not lighter colors necessarily, it doesn't matter what the color is, but the lighter value advances to you, the darker drops away. And that'll help you if you're trying to create some depth in your image. So I like the, um, the soft background. The exposure on the feathers is good. The eye is, is looking really good. Um, one of the things it says, what could you have done better at the time of capture? I don't know if this would be better, but um, sometimes you get caught with a shutter speed that you don't, you don't really want. So you've got just a little bit of motion blur out here and out here. Now, sometimes that adds to the flight, adds to the way it looks. So that that's up to you. But my suggestion would be like a little bit of a, of a faster shutter speed to freeze that or maybe a little slower to blur it more. But then you run into the problem of blurring the rest of the bird. So, so you're in between there. So I understand why you did what you did. Um, 
the composition I, I definitely like. You have room for the bird to move into. Even though its eye is in the left-hand side of the image, the difference between the end of the bill and the end of the image and the end of the feet and the end of the right side of the image is enough to make it feel like there's room for the bird to move into. I also like that it's on the lower two thirds of the image. And I know people get sick of the rule of thirds, law of thirds or whatever, but in many cases it does work. So we've got a two thirds, even in the background, two thirds and one third. And I, I like that the bird's placed in the bottom two thirds. As I said, the dappled sunlight makes it really hard to get a good exposure. So you did really well there for sure. Um, as far as colors go, you'll, this is also a good example of warm colors advancing and cool colors uh, falling away. So if you take a minute and look at the bill and the eye and the feet, they really do jump out at you. And that's because they're juxtaposed to the blue. The blue and the orange, if you remember, are complementary colors, and they will each make the other pop. So the feet, especially up against the blue, you can see that they they really have jumped. Um, it's it's a good shot in a difficult situation. The only thing I might suggest is I may darken this a little bit. It's a little close to the value of the feathers, even though they're not the same color. This is close to the same value, so I would maybe darken this area a little bit there. But other than that. You made the most of a difficult situation. Now, I, I have a website that you might be interested in called birdpoty.com. That's Bird Photographer of the Year. Birdpoty.com. And you can do a forward slash 2021 winners. Maybe you'll get some ideas or some inspiration there. Okay, who took the image? If uh, whoever took the image is talking, you're muted. You need to hold the space <laughs> bar. Mike, can, I mean, uh, Rick, can you tell us who um, captured them? Yeah, this is Joan Smith. I'm not sure if she's on. Okay. I don't okay. think she is. Okay. Okay. Well, if anybody else likes bird photography, <laughs> you can do birdpoty.com. Bird Photographer of the Year. Okay, the fourth image is um, yellow tongue. And I do like that the yellow tongue is sharp and crisp. Your exposure is soft, which is nice for, for floral work. Um, actually, flower photography for me works better when it's not sunny and not harsh. When it's overcast, it's like a huge, big soft box working for you. So uh, good choice there. Uh, one thing I might suggest is you might underexpose this just a touch and make the colors just slightly richer. Because what's happening there is the purple and the yellow, which I'll, I'll mention in a little bit. Uh, one other thing I think about the suggestion I have is try a square crop here. Because this down here isn't really necessary. Up here, maybe you can, can lose a little bit of that, and then that'll help you over here. Maybe a bit more contrast. This spot right here, you can see how it jumps forward once I point it out. So a square crop, you might be able to take that off. And if not, at least it'll make it smaller that you can clone over it. Uh, your color is, is very good. Composition-wise, I think a square would help. Um, the distractions, I, I mentioned this already. We'll do something about that, either crop it out or darken it. And down here, but if you do a square crop, you'll be able to deal with those things very easily and get rid of those. Um, the lighting is smooth, as I said, you did a good choice there, perfect for flower photography. Um, your use of color 
it's beautiful. It's warm opposed to cool, yellow opposed to its complement, which is purple. Very, very nice work on your color choice there, even though you found it rather than chose it. Very good. Um, the main suggestions, as I said, are try a square crop, see what you think of that. And if you don't like that, try either cloning this or darkening it. And you can do the same thing here and that'll get rid of some distractions for you. Okay, I, I might suggest that you look up a photographer named Lucy Ketchum. L-U-C-Y, Lucy Ketchum, K-E-T-C-H-U-M. Okay, who did the image? Rick, there we go. You... I'm here. Okay. Uh, that's mine, uh, Mike. Thank you. I, I think that'll work pretty good if I do a square. Okay, I do too. Give it try a try. That. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Mementos, an absolutely beautiful exposure. Creamy and soft. No directional light whatsoever. It just makes you wonder where is the light coming from? How did this get lit? Um, it's possibly a painting with light or a longer exposure. I, I guess I'll find out. I also like the use of red. You use color very, very well here. The red plays off the green bowl. Um, the red shoes, the greenish olivish background, very, very nice. Um, every detail is showing. Nothing's blocked out or burned out. And with a white statue, that's always a danger. Um, one suggestion I might have, and this may sound ridiculous, but set it up again and slide this bowl over a little bit so that you have one entire structure, one entire shape. You have two shapes now. Now the eye will definitely jump from here to here, but in a still life, try it, Try moving it over or sliding the shoes over a little so that they intersect. And I know there's people that would say, wow, that's a merge. Uh, yes, that's a merge. So I'm suggesting you do a merge. That way you'll have one perfect circle and your composition will be totally complete it is beautiful and it's a small thing but i'm hoping i'm thinking it'll make a difference also composition wise i like the use of the triangle you can see it's a triangular set there um again you lead the eye in a circle the lighting is excellent it's dreamy there's no real light source. It's just beautiful. I again, excellent use of red. A suggestion I might have is to tone, tone the red back a little so that it's not, a, red is such an eye catcher that it'll even stop you from making that circle I talked about with the eye. So try backing off on the red a little bit and see what you think. Uh, creativity is excellent. The post-processing is beautiful. Your choice of a vignette is superb. Um, great image, really great image. Who did this one? Uh, that's Diane. Uh, Diane, it's awesome. Thank you. I took a mini course in still life and I said to use things that mean something to you and uh, all of these items mean something. But my light source is a speed light. That's, I don't have any uh, studio lights anymore. So I uh, have found a spot in my tiny room <laughs> where I don't get shadows all over the place. And the speed light works pretty good. It's, well, it's nice, really nice. Thank you. And I, I, I will take your suggestion. Well, let's see what you think. Okay. By the way, the the shoes are from my mother's collection. They're actually cloisonné ashtrays. Oh wow! <laughs> and the uh, 
three items to the right are things my late husband brought home from China when he was there during World War II. Wow. And, oh, the, and the tall figure I mean, was, a, was a gift from somebody. So they all mean something. Uh, Diane, do you want a little homework? Yeah. Say yes. Oh, man, that got her, that cut me off. <laughs> if you can still hear me. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I take notes all the time. Okay, here's a here's a photographer for you that to look at, Peter Zentjens, Z E N T J E N S, and it, on his website, click on the part that says "Other Still Life Work." Okay, I'll check it out. Okay, thank you. Okay, feeding time. Um, excellent composition. The uh, the diagonal lines are just beautiful. The background is just soft and and again the sharpness and the the we can call that atmospheric perspective actually that the softer stuff tends to fall back. Um, you can see the push and pull of the out of focus and the in focus. Um, one suggestion I might have is removing this, which connects the bird to the, to the stick. And it would be good to have the bird, or at least in my opinion, to have the bird as, an, as a shape of its own. Um, maybe these berries can go too, but that's completely up to you. Now, this could be my screen. I hesitated to even mention it but it looks slightly magenta to me. And again, that could be my computer. So um, if this is your image and it looks perfect on yours, then ignore what I just said. Uh, it has the wow factor. One thing that's tremendous is the catch light in the eye of the mother and the baby. And a catch light makes a bird or any animal look so much more alive. Technically, it's excellent. It's a sharp exposure, um, exposed very well considering you're in deep woods. And you can tell that there's really no kind of sunlight that's right on the subject itself. So really nice work there. The diagonal lines are absolutely great. And the reason I think they're great is because they're repeated right here and right here. So that really pulls this whole composition together. I love this little triangular piece of negative space. So really, really great work there. Uh, as far as distractions go, again, um, the berries, I would at least try it and see what you think. And I would suggest you try removing that and see what you think about that as well. Your lighting is smooth and beautiful. Uh, again, the color is great. And correct me if I'm wrong, it just seems just to lean that way just slightly. A great shot, a great capture. So as far as post-processing, um, check me on the color and remove that little item or two and um, see what you think of that. Tonight's images are fantastic, by the way. Okay. Um, I'm also going to mention to you birdpoty.com, birdphotographeroftheyear.com. And you can see the winners 2021, 2020, and so on. Okay, whose image is this? Hi, Mike. Uh, this is Kurt Wilkie. Uh, hi, Kurt. Good. Hi. Yeah, thanks very much for the comments. Uh, this was taken down at uh, Lake Redmond Boardwalk last uh, June. Oh. And... Uh, a certain fellow, Dimitri, was standing next to me taking shots <laughs> at the same time. And so this one has a lot of meaning to me. Yes, I guess. I understand that completely. Thank you. Number seven is Milk Bath in the Woods. 
Um, one thing that I, I mentioned that I think the photographer did well was you're evoking some emotion here. You're presenting a calm feeling or a peaceful feeling. You're evoking emotion in the viewer. It's calm and it's beautiful. Um, milk bath generally is used for, um, believe it or not, uh, infant baby shots and pregnant women shots usually are maternity shots is what milk bath is usually used for. But to just have it used for flowers is very nice. Um, a suggestion that I might have, and I'm going to bring this up again later, is um, two things, actually. You want to, I, I suggest you try lightening this in order to balance here more, or make two images. Do a crop and you'll have two verticals. This one will be light and peaceful. This one will be a little more dark and mysterious. I still think I would lighten this corner even if you make it its own image. I would also uh, mention to clean up some of these reflections. I know they're really there, but again, the bright value attracts attention. And if you ever, I know some people don't ever print, but if you ever would print, they will really stand out because there's not white ink. They will just let the paper show at those spots. Uh, let's see. I also would recommend that you crop up here on top so that you don't see the edge of what you were working with. So a crop right there, I think, would really help. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful idea. It's a difficult exposure because I see you have a bright light on one side and a dark and dark lighting on the other. I do like the negative space that you find in between all of these things. Uh, as far as distractions go, I mentioned the white spots and this looks like a fly, get rid of that. And those are easy fixes. So don't, uh, don't stress about it. Um, if you're gonna keep it as one image, even the lighting out a little bit by doing either maybe a dodge in fact, that, that's what I would do because I'm kind of used to that from the old days. Um, use of color. The reds and greens look really good together. You did a good job with that as they are complementary colors. They, you can see they play against each other very, very nicely. Creative, good. Uh, my final suggestions. Crop the top. Remove the fly in the spots. And then try try two images. See what you think of that. Right in this corner, and, and you're going to have something. I'm curious to see um, what this looks like split in two. OK. Um, milk bath is all over the internet, so I can't really pick out one person for you to look at. But just put milk bath flowers, and, and you'll be swamped in it. OK, who did this one? Hi there, this is Liz Brown. Have anything to say? Uh, well, uh, that is actually sunlight filtering through my woods. My tub, ah, is, okay. my tub is actually set out in the woods and um, I have people, I have done some maternity, but I've also done just like women in general, they come out and get in the tub. This day in particular was for maternity. Uh -huh. And if you look in the lower left corner, it's a, a little bit of an orange color. Um, that's actually her dress. Right here? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. But I just, um, but I loved how the sun was just coming through my trees and just how it hit that spot. Yeah. What you think, what you think there is a fly, it's actually just probably a part of a flower. Um, okay. This day she forgot to bring a bouquet of flowers. So actually all of this came from my property. I actually had some roses that bloomed. Oh, nice. I don't know what those orange trumpet things are, but I, I was like, oh, there's some orange. We'll grab that. Uh, the green is all wild mint that grows on my Oh, property. wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so nice. I went, I'm curious. If you try that split, I'm, I'm curious to see what you think. Okay. 
yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give that a try. Yeah, that top part there, that's the edge of the tub. We, um, we had purchased a cabin on the property next to us. We're a mile back in the woods and uh, it pretty much had fallen down, but the tub sat right out on the front upside down. Uh -oh. And I'm like, I can't, I couldn't find anybody to buy it. So I was like, what can we do with this? And <laughs> it's proven to be really popular. We put soil around it. We put grass sod. So if it's got grass that grows around it and yeah, people just love it. Nice. Could you put in milk baths? All of it's indoors. Like you don't see any tub outdoors in the woods. Yeah, that's true. So it's, yeah, it's very popular. I've got people waiting for fall. They want to do Halloween. Uh, we're waiting for snow to do hot cocoa with jumbo marshmallows. Jeez. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> but thank you very much. I will definitely do that and I'll post it in the group. Okay, good. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Image number eight. 2022-0716-IMG6238. I don't think that's actually supposed to be the title, <laughs> the title of the image, um, but I, I really like it. A great use of, I don't know if it's a, a lookup table, which is called a LUT. I don't know if it's, it's the coloration is from that. Um, it's a possible sky replacement or a texture, but whatever it is, your choices were good, very good, because it looks to be, the image looks to be as old as the building itself. Um, as far as suggestions go, at the time of capture, I'm, I'm saying always to myself and in image reviews, let's space on top and bottom, you can crop later. So it ended up that this got kind of tight here on the top and the bottom. So if there's more room in the image, then maybe loosen that up a little bit. As far as suggestions go in post-processing, I would uh, remove the sign. I'd remove this and I think I would darken this and maybe even remove it. See what you think, because it's, the unlucky thing is it's exactly the same color or close to it as this. So they kind of fight each other. So either darken or try removing, see what you think. Same with the people, your choice. If you want it to, people to know it is modern or if you want to take the time to get them out of there, that's up to you. Um, I, I, let's see. As far as what's called the wow factor here, really good. When you first look at it, it, it really hits you and grabs you, the color especially, very nice. Um, the technical, it's appropriate to the image, whether it is a texture or a LUD or whatever it is, or maybe it's just your exposure. The exposure's good, the colors are rich. Um, again, the tree trunk is a distraction to me, the sign and the people. Your lighting is super smooth. Your use of color is really quite good. Um, the orange tone adds to a real vintage look there. Creative processing for sure. And uh, I wanna hear about the sky then when we're finished there. So really my suggestions are, are kind of small. I would darken here, maybe remove this or remove this. See what you think either way, um, the people in the sign. I also, if I'm getting really picky, I'm gonna take that out and take this out, but that's completely up to you because you are the artist. Now, um, a photographer I might suggest is Berenice Abbott. And Berenice Abbott is super famous for um, architectural photography from back when. So I suggested her because um, during her time in photography, it's kind of like what you're trying to do here. Okay, who did this one? That was me, Vicki Sanders. Um, Vicki, don't beat me up because I teased you about the title, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I did that. <laughs> I know I typed it in, but I guess I didn't hit it or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, this was taken, it was cloudy that day, and um, um, I had to 
just changed the exposure a little bit. I brought it um, up a little bit and did the highlights and shadows and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, for the sky, it was a cloudy, it had rained earlier. Um, and all I did was lower the exposure and it brought all the clouds out. Oh, nice. And it just seemed like it matched the building and the trees and everything. It gave it yeah. that same, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> but anyway, I tried to take the people out in the background and I just didn't get it right. So <laughs> understood. I just left them in there. In fact, I think if you look, that person on the left might be ghosting in there. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, not easy, that's for sure. Yeah, but um, this was the Gladfelter building at Gettysburg College. Oh, okay. It's a beautiful right. building. Well, your your exposure makes it look as old as it is, so that's that's yeah. good work there. Yeah, it's from 1888, I believe. Ooh. So, well, thank hey. you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, double doors. Um, good use of symmetry here for sure. The colors are beautiful. The blue and orange, even if it's not royal blue and bright orange, they still work together so nicely. Uh, it's a good find. It's one of those things people would just walk past. So good, good work there. Um, as I look at it now, it actually looks straighter than when I looked at it today. Because I, in my notes, I had to try and straighten it. I, I'm not sure what I would use to straighten it, whether I would run the level along this line or this one. Concrete generally is straight, but who knows? And if I'm completely out in left field, um, let me know for sure. So think about at least trying it and see if I'm full of baloney or not. Uh, the focus is, is slightly soft. I think there's a filter on it, makes it look more painterly, but it's appropriate to this photograph for sure, because it's showing something that's older. Um, the, the textures aren't really that important. It's the shapes, all the repeated rectangles that make this picture what it is even the rectangles that are on their sides. They're everywhere. The bricks, um, right here's a long one, in between the rails, there are rectangles everywhere. And that's why it has a consistent look because of the symmetry and the shapes. Uh, the lighting is again, clean and smooth. There's been a lot of that tonight, actually. The blue and orange looks really good together. Um, the creativity, I put down that that's good because you stopped and you saw it. And how many people walked by and didn't even pay attention. And just because you don't have a camera doesn't mean you can enjoy something, don't, can't enjoy something beautiful. So see if I'm wrong about the, um, the straightening. Maybe you want to try a really light vignette also to lead in to the doors a little more. Try that and see what you think. Uh, let's see. Um, Jim Nilsson is a photographer who specializes in doors and windows. So if this is your image, I would look at Jim Nilsson, N-I-L-S-O-N. And who did this one? Mike, that's mine. You're I right. knew it. <laughs> um, I, I know I straightened it. I'm not sure if I used the top of the doorway. Where above okay. The door. Yeah, I, I think I th did that. And it could be me, it could be my eyes too. Well, I don't know, Mike. I trust you. <laughs> anyway, this this is right off of State Street, right behind Little Amps downtown. Oh. If you go in that alley, it's the very first doorway you see. And I find it by accident, but I fell in love with the door color and it was an overcast day. So that helped with the photography a lot. Yeah. Thank you for the, um, and I, I will try the vignette. I thought I put one in, but I guess I didn't. I'm looking at the bottom and I probably didn't. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mike, for everything. You're welcome. Do you have any sort of a texture or a filter on there? No, I just use, I use the clarity a lot. Oh, okay. Things like that. That's probably what I did here. because I like this, the look of the cement and above the doorway that big Yeah. Room. I, I like the way those colors, the age looks or whatever it, exactly. you know, vintage look of it. So, okay, great. Thanks, Mike. Mike, uh, before you start on the next image, I want to remind you it's 10 minutes till eight and uh, we have another eight images to go. So get moving, you're saying. Oh, I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number 10 is relative bearing. Um, very well composed, absolutely well composed. And this harkens back to what I mentioned with the other one about um, overlapping the things in your still life that makes it all into one shape. Uh, the shapes and the textures relate. The texture of the bearings relates to the bottle and the, I think it's a pomegranate. The textures of the walnuts relate to the textures of the wood and the cloth. Um, very, very beautiful there. And again, um, symbolism plays a huge role in still life. Um, again, you've made a single shape out of there and that really is quite good. Now I'm gonna take a guess that this is painting with light. And the reason that I'm saying that is because I'm, I noticed and this is like super picky, so don't punch me. There's a little bit of a shadow here and here, but it might help to have a little something here for the wine bottle as well. And it could be in your painting with light that that disappeared or, or didn't happen. I know it's a ridiculous thing because the image is beautiful, but maybe it would help. Uh, let's see, what to improve the image, nothing. Uh, let's see, the pomegranate, fertility, the walnuts, wisdom, and the wine, joy, and celebration. They all do have a meaning. Uh, as far as a um, bearing, I'm not sure what the meaning of that would be. It's a super image, perfect lighting, perfect exposure. Everything is detailed. Um, the triangular composition, which if you take a look, you can see it. Everything overlaps. The background is a darker value. It falls away. Uh, let's see. I, as I said, I'm going to guess it was painting with light. The colors are muted and beautiful. The red and the green play together. The orange of the walnuts and the blue in the background play together. Um, a little bit of an unusual combination of objects. Your processing is beautiful and your image is beautiful. And I might suggest that you look up a photographer named Dirk Erker, E-R-C, sorry, Erken, E-R-C-K-E-N, Dirk Erken. He does a lot of still life stuff. Okay, who did the image? That's mine. Uh, thanks for the compliments. Uh, I uh, did this in the basement of a friend of mine's house because he had the bearing. <laughs> and, and, and a bigger studio area than I did. Understood. <laughs> but uh, and and that guy's name is Harold Ross, who's a pretty well known light painter. So, uh, but uh, yeah, you spoke of different uh, symbolism in there of the of the pomegranate and the uh, walnuts and the wine. And everything. Everything is just the uh, that that wine bottle label is contrived. I made that up. <laughs> I made my own wine label and put it on there and oh my gosh everything on there has a meaning too but you know that's all personal so uh -huh. understood <laughs> anyway. but uh this is uh one of my more favorite of my light painting efforts and it's it has uh sold a few times Good. Uh, and every time i've showed it it's received the same compliments as you gave it great no one ever noticed anything about that shadow from the bottle missing. I I never saw it, but you're right. There should be a little, there should be a little something in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can easily put it in. Yep. Anyway, thank you so much. You're very welcome. And I was going to suggest you look at Harold Ross, and then I thought <laughs> he already knows him. <laughs> I don't, 
I can tell by the look of it. Okay, Akamak is on set. Um, the sky is exposed beautifully well. I like that there's more weight in the reflection half than, and, and than there is in the actual sky half, which makes this a photograph of the reflection. Um, it, it makes the, the reflection very important. As far as what to do in post-processing, I'm going to suggest, and this could be actually natural, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to suggest that this is a little bit too bright, that maybe you want to darken it slightly, but still maintain the information. Because I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking the sun is behind this. So maybe you want this a little bit darker. And as I said, when, when it comes your time to comment, please let me know. Um, I would remove this, whatever it is. Other than that, the, the water and the reflection in the sky looks beautiful. It's sharp, it's well exposed. The composition is good. I like that your horizon line is above center, which as I said, makes this more important. Um, let's see, I've mentioned this already. The lighting is great. Oh, I know what else. Your use of cool and warm colors, like the cool green, and the warm orange, the cool blue, and the warm orange, that brings out the best in both. When it doesn't necessarily have to be complementary colors, but a warm and a cool color will play off each other. The warm color will advance, and you can see that down here, and the cool color will recede, and you can see that up here. So good work with the color. Um, as far as any suggestions go, I mentioned this guy before, Daniel Corden, K-O-R-D-A-N, Daniel Corden. Okay, who did this one? Uh, that's me. Uh, yes, I shot that uh, uh, from Lancaster County over to the York side, uh, Accomack Hill. And, and you're right on the, uh, I have to darken that a little bit. I, it was dark and I lightened it. Now looking at it again, I said, I probably should have darkened the hill. <laughs> I understand. Every time you look at something, you think, wait, well, hey, maybe I should do this or that. We, we've, get, we've had great atmospheric conditions lately for sunsets, and I've been taking advantage when I can. I always look for dead water to try and uh -huh. get through the thing. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Candid Cousin. Uh, really a, a good exposure. Skin tone can be a pain, but this looks really good. Your choice of f-stop was excellent your background is nice and soft um you're a little soft on the toe and the front shoe but that's that's not a big deal in this case because your focus helps stay sharp you're you're soft here sharp here and soft back here so it kind of brings it right into play um uh let's see i would get rid of this because it's the same value as his skin. So that'll make it fight a little bit against it. Uh, let's see, the face is sharp, the eyes look good. It's a well-balanced composition for sure. We have, oh, we have this space and this space pretty much equal. So it's a, a good balance there. Overcast lighting, perfect for portraits. Uh, the warm and cool thing again, the hat and the shirt. And in the background, the green and the red. It really does make a difference. So other than that soft foot, and that's, that's not really bothersome to me, I think it's a great job. My only thing that I am a little bit concerned and upset about is that Steelers hat. <laughs> Maybe you want to consider getting an eagle's hat. I can get one for you. Um, as far as photographers go, try Jennifer Betts, B-E-T-T-S, Jennifer Betts. And you'll actually, if you're on Instagram, you'll find a lot of her portrait stuff on Instagram. Okay, who did this one? 
Yeah, uh, me, Dan Olson, and uh, yeah, it, it was uh, um, it was a golden hour uh, shot. And the only thing I had to do was I did uh, desaturate the background because it did kind of compete uh, with the subject a little bit, and then brought some of the, and then brought some of the grittiness back in on the on the ground in front of them there because it Good. was it was a little bright and and you know, nondescript, and then uh, and then whitened the white of the eyes and a little bit with the with the uh, iris there. But um, yeah, other than that, no. It, but the neat part about it was, is I was actually shooting the other kids doing uh, volleyball, and then this cousin was waiting in the background, waiting for everybody to get done with volleyball so they could do football, and he sat on it. So, um, it, you know, it looks a little staged, but actually, it really was uh, very, very candid. He just happened to have the exact posing. So the one thing I've read a little bit about is, you know, how you position the hands and all this kind of stuff for portraits. And there's art and science to it. And I don't know either one of them. So this was absolutely just dumb luck. But, but, but the end product was such that I'm like, holy crap, this is a really good one. And, my <laughs> only, the, and, and the only thing I didn't like is the sock was so overexposed for whatever reason, just his left sock. And I couldn't get that back. But that was about the only thing. But I, I appreciate the comments. And uh, thanks. It's the, the one in the back is exposed correctly. And the one in the front is overexposed because yep. the one in the back is the light is blocked. Right. Okay. One in the front, it is not. Right. So that's, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Right. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Creative intensity. Um, super crisp, beautiful, beautiful focus. Good use of color. It's the orange and blue thing again. Uh, I like your composition with the diagonal lines. Um, as far as improving the image, I'm not sure what can be done about this, if it can just be darkened or if it can be cloned somehow. I'm not sure what to do about that. I think first I would try darkening so that it falls more to the background rather than coming forward. I talk about values and you can see the value of this is more than the value of this. So they're, they're going to compete. So see what you can do about that. Other than that, the shot is great. The eyes are in sharp focus. Uh, it's a good exposure. You have detail everywhere. Um, I like the diagonals, like I said. And you'll find the diagonals here, 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 and even in the pearls, the necklace. The diagonals denote activity and action. So very nice job there. Uh, let's see. The lighting is excellent. It reveals everything. Again, use of warm color, cool color. The, the blue drops away. Um, very nice. Who did this one? It's Rich Scar. Yeah, this was like crashing for an exam in college. I, I, <laughs> I, I waited a little bit too late. I love the picture, whatever. And then I think after I clicked the button, whatever, I said, oh, man, I got to get rid of exactly what you pointed out there. And, uh, <laughs> right. yeah. and can, can I ask you, would you do that? And in, in, I, I, I started to dark a little bit and botched it up. But would you do a, a clone or heal in Lightroom? Or would you do something in Photoshop, like a replace or something? Well, I, I don't use either one, but I would think Photoshop would be more powerful that you'd yeah. have more options and more choices. Because yep. you could even do you could even do like a, a eyedropper and choose that color and only work with that color. Yeah, good idea. Good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, this kid, this kid was really talented. It was at a, a jazz festival in Vail, Colorado. This kid's good. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. 14, Perseverance. Oh, by the way, um, Rich, you may want to check out Dana Pacifico. She's a, um, a photographer of musicians, and some of them are pretty wild. Dana Pacifico. How do you spell it? P-A-C-I-F-I-C-O. Thank you. There's some concert shots in there. <laughs> They're pretty awesome. Okay, Perseverance. Um, your use of the light is really, really quite good. Your framing is good. Black and white is an excellent choice. Um, the only suggestion I might have is if it's possible to get just a touch of more contrast in the sky, 
not enough that you lose all this, but maybe just a touch because there is a little information over here and here. Maybe you can pick up some of that. Um, your exposure otherwise is really good. You have hundreds of shades of gray, maybe thousands, which is always great in black and white. Um, again, the framing, I like the two thirds, one third. You have a zillion million repeated shapes, natural framing, beautiful composition there. The light is excellent. I love that it's hard on this side and dark on this side. It makes it look really round. Um, creativity wise, you found it. Again, people walk past that. Post-processing, uh, maybe a touch of sharpening, but again, it could be the screen. But I love all these shades of gray that you have. Um, I don't really have any suggestions as far as cloning or getting rid of anything. I think it looks good. Maybe the contrast in the sky and see what you can do from there. And I noticed, by the way, going through these things, that there's hardly any spots that I'm suggesting to get rid of. It's way less than how picky I usually am. Who did this one? Hi, Mike. Steve Shedden. I did it. Um, it was taken up at the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania. And when I walked past this single tree holding on for dear life at the edge of the rocks, I just had to take the shot. Um, <laughs> in post-production, there was just way too much green and it just seemed to cloud the picture. So yeah. I went with the black and white because I wanted to concentrate on just the tree. Uh, the sky was pretty well blown out. I do see a little bit of information you mentioned, so I will see if I can bring that out a little bit. Okay. But there wasn't much sky that day. Right, I'm sure. I'm sure. Very nice. Good choice in the black and white, for sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. And you can look up a photographer named Simon Baxter. He is a tree photographer. Joe, Good. maybe you want to look him up, too. Simon Baxter. Okay. Hey, well, thank you. Forest. Yeah, you're welcome. The Ghosts of Saks Bridge. And what's cool about this it's, is it that it's really supposed to be haunted, Saks Bridge. It's supposed to be, you know, don't go at midnight and all that kind of thing. Um, your toning is absolutely appropriate here. Very nice. Your technique is good. The composition's good. You, you left some space for them to walk into. Um, one thing that I would consider, and it depends on what you're going for, um, there's still some parts of the sign back here. Now, if you're trying to show that it's of today, but the ghosts are still there, okay. But I think I'd work on, on maybe taking more of that out. It's tedious and it takes a long time, but it, it's worth it. Uh, good use of texture and tone, very, very nice there. Um, you have a great leading line, believe it or not. Linear perspective. You see the, the top and the bottom of the bridge go back to a vanishing point. So good work there. Um, as I said, room to walk into. Repeated shapes everywhere, including the ghosts. Atmospheric perspective. Sharp and crisp up here. Softer and muted back here. Um, great job considering not only is it a difficult procedure but when you have total bright and total dark it's a difficult exposure so um so that looks good your processing is good your composition is good my suggestion is take a look back here at the lettering and see what you think of that okay who did this one hi it's elaine chook um this is actually a very old composite it's one of the first that i've ever done um, your comment about the light in the back is something I was very conflicted about. The original <laughs> image um, showed a lot of detail and color back there, a lot of trees, and I think there might have even been a parked car that I knew I wanted to get rid of, and I knew I wanted that to be very bright to show the, the contrast between the light at the end of the tunnel and the ghosts that are walking mm -hmm. towards the other end. But I, I, for some reason, I, I still wanted to show just a touch of that detail 
to give it almost a ghostly appearance outside as well. I'm still okay. not sure which way I liked it. I, I knew that I wanted to get rid of the realistic detail, um, but I'll, I'll try brightening that up a little bit and see if that helps. Well, maybe also, um, I don't know how you feel about maybe throwing a really, really light texture wipe this all out and then throw a really light texture back here. Maybe that would help you. That's a good idea. I will give, it, give that a try. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, go ahead. My, my intent in this photo initially was really to depict the history of this bridge and the purported ghost. And unfortunately, I didn't have any images of um, Civil War soldiers, which would have been ideal. Yeah. Um, so it, the ghosts that I chose are really a, um, a photograph of uh, bronze statues at the FDR Memorial in Washington, D.C. Oh. It doesn't relate at all to the Civil <laughs> War, but it's all that I had. And after all was said and done, I, I kind of like the idea that this entire photo um, depicts two different, very pivotal points in the history of this nature. True. In the history of this nation. Um, the one being the, the, the Great Depression. Um, those statues were uh, depicting men standing in a food line, I believe. Um, and then, of course, the Civil War being another very pivotal point in our, mm. in our history. Um, so that's why I left them in there. I, I wish I had had some soldiers in uniform, but it didn't work out that way. Well, something that might interest you is a website. It's well, if you just look this up, then and now photographs of Gettysburg Battlefield. And what they did was go back and photograph now compared to old time photographs. They photographed the same scene to see how it changed. Then <laughs> and now photographs of Gettysburg Battlefield. Okay, I'll look at that. Thank okay. you, Mike. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, what a wonderful morning. Um, the very, very good use of layers. You have a dark layer, a light layer, a dark layer, a darker layer, a light layer, and that gives real, real depth. Very good use of foreground, middle ground, background. Um, plus, I'm impressed you got up early. And uh, Good work there. It could be again me or my chair might be crooked. Try running right along here maybe to see if you have a straight horizon line or not. And like I said, it, it could be just me, but try that and see. Uh, really great exposure, a tremendous in focus. The negative space is really nice, be, meaning the reflections here. Um, you use triangles beautifully on the two hills and an inverted one here and he inverted one here, triangles everywhere, which is great in composition. Um, your horizon line is above the halfway mark, which is nice. It makes the foreground much more important. Um, I, I did see a little bit of light here, but it's an actual house. So I would let that alone because it's it's um, it's not doing anything as far as pulling up any other values anywhere else in the image. And it lets you know that there's something there. The blue and orange combination, the warm and cool combination always works. Great processing. Um, the foreground has information. Beautiful shot. Who did this one? Um, that's me, Judy Keim, and I, I did get up early. Um, <laughs> it was for a photography workshop, and uh, we, we met at five o'clock, so you know mm. I got up early. Uh, this was in Crested Butte, Colorado, um, at a wildflower festival, and they have um, different events. And it, it was a challenge for me, because I'm not all that good at low light. Um, the instructor actually suggested doing some bracketing, which I did, but not in this shot because I don't know how to do that yet. So I need to go back sometime and try to do that. And, but I did 
some things with you know the, sh the shadows and the highlights and that kind of thing so mm -hmm. um did did the best i could <laughs> with oh, what i know fine. so yeah, you did well thank you thank you and i appreciate your comments i always learn so much from you mike oh thank you uh maybe you'll learn something from scott <laughs> smora too s-m-o-r-r-a scott smora okay 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 thank you you're welcome blue hour houston um the good thing about this is you caught a moment for sure the pink in the clouds is beautiful and it's 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 a difficult exposure because there's so many different light temperatures, so many different light sources. So um, I'd have to say that you did well with that. Now, if you print it, these are gonna be totally burned out. But as far as looking at it digitally, beautiful. I also like this. That to me makes the entire image. It's kind of like all this stuff going on and then here he is. Um, the orange lights and the starbursts obviously pull your attention. It's a difficult exposure and you're showing some detail, so that's good. Um, like I said, many kinds of light temperature. Believe it or not, there's a good use here of linear perspective. You can see how these get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as they head back. The tracks provided also. So um, so good work with that. It it actually leads you into the image, but I can't get can't stop looking at that guy, which is absolutely tremendous. Um, the office building on the right, I would get rid of these marks right here because they're pretty close to this and his shirt. Uh, let's see, the splashes of warm color lead the eye. And that's what brought me to him is this and this and this. Um, it's hard to darken those headlights because they get kind of gray and yucky. So just go with that. It's a difficult exposure. You did good. And I really like this. Maybe you want to lighten him up a little bit so that people notice him more. Okay, who did this one? Hey Mike, that's Rod Frazier. I was in uh, I was in Houston back in June, and I think I just finished having uh, some Texas barbecue, and so I was walking <laughs> it off, and I, I noticed all of the uh, the light bursts coming from the streetcars. So I thought I'd capture it, and that's actually what I was looking for. And the guy on the right, I actually didn't even notice him when I took the picture until I started processing it, and said, "Wow, that's really neat." It is great. Um, you might want to look up, well, you won't have to look it up. You probably know her, Karen Cummings. I might suggest you look at her work. She has a series called Good Night Harrisburg. Okay, thanks, Mike. Yeah, check it out. Okay, she's pumping up that hill. There's somebody here who likes Kate Bush or Stranger Things or both is my prediction. Uh, you caught a moment here. You got the absolute perfect grimace or smile, one or the other. Your composition gives her room to ride into, which is nice. <coughs> Excuse me. If you still have the original image, see if you have a crop that's looser to get the whole wheel in. I'd like to see the whole wheel so that she is one shape, one with the bike. I'd also try cropping off to the right. Pull that down, that's not really helping. And then you can clone these out, whatever's left. She'll still have room to, to be leaning into it. Maybe you wanna try it as a black and white because the color really is, is nothing. It's not really helpful to your image. It's all about her. So maybe you wanna try black and white. Um, the exposure is a little bit dark. It's a kind of a joyful, happy thing. So try and lighten it up a little bit. See what you think about that. Uh, let's see. I like the bike turning in, and she is obviously working hard. Uh, the light's even and smooth, but a little bit dark. I suggest to try it black and white. 
um, very creative. So my suggestions are try the crop on the right, see if you have an opening at the bottom with the bike in it and uh, look up Patrick Smith. Okay, who did this one? There we go. That's from uh, Mary Eileen Carson. That was um, on the day that uh, you were leading a group at Lily Ponds. I was in Frederick, Maryland for the big wheel bike race that they have there. <laughs> and um, yeah, and and some of the some of the costumes were uh, pretty good. I mean, some some people dressed, some people didn't dress, but. You know, everybody, as they make that turn, you're coming along a flat street, you make that turn and it all, I mean, that's the start of a hill. And so they all start pumping away there. So, and and I, I like the idea of maybe trying it with uh, black and white. Okay. I like that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And that's it. Okay, Mike, thank you so much. If everybody wants to unmute themselves, let's give Mike a big round of applause. For his, uh, his hey, hey, Mike. Oh, Mike. Hey, Mike. Thanks as usual, Mike. Mike. Yes. Really oh, great, Mike. Mike. Hey, Thank Mike. You. I'm going to have to get a cup of coffee and follow all of these almost 20 leads that you gave us. <laughs> <laughs> no, Diane, you misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoy it. I, oh, I, good. I, I look them all up, whether they're anything I'm interested in or not. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> And Mike, you mentioned about the quality of the images. Every every time we do this, they go up and up, don't they? I know, yeah. I know. It gets harder and harder to do this. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Okay, folks, uh, that is it. We will see you maybe on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock at Messiah Village. And if not, we'll see you in two weeks uh, on a Monday night uh, for a presentation by Dennis Baker. Thank you much, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks again, Mike. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yep. Great job, Mike. Thanks.